Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ronnie George and I am a registered Indian patent agent. So the topic that we are going to discuss today is patent claim and elements of patent claim. Now before I start the topic, I am assuming that you already have basic knowledge about what is a patent and what is a patent specification. In case you don't, I would strongly recommend you to watch my other videos titled as Introduction to Patent as well as Patent Specification and Parts of Specification. Those videos will help you to better understand this video. So if you have not watched it, please go and watch it. I will also try to pin it somewhere in the video or you know add the link in the description. So before wasting any more time, let's start with the topic. So what is a patent claim? Let's understand that point wise. So the first point states that a patent claim is a part of a patent specification. Now a patent specification is a techno legal document that describes the invention which is eventually filed at the patent office. The patent specification includes various sections such as background, abstract, summary, brief description of drawings detailed description and similarly patent claim forms a part of a patent specification. Okay. Now the second point states a patent claim is the most important part of a patent specification. So as I said the patent specification includes several parts but the patent claim forms the most important part of the patent specification. In fact you can also consider it as the heart of a patent application. Now why is it so important? Let's understand that from the third point. So the third point states a patent claim is a legally enforceable statement that defines the boundaries of an invention. Now what that means is in the entire patent specification it is in the patent claims section that is written that what the invention is trying to protect. Okay, so basically the patent claim sets the scope of protection of the invention in the patent application. Now let's check the fourth point. So the fourth point states a patent claim clarifies what others are prohibited from making, using, selling or importing without permission from the owner of the invention. So this is in connection with the third point. So as it is clear from the third point that the patent claim defines the scope of protection that is you know what the invention is trying to protect from the patent application so it also makes clear that what the others cannot use or sell or maybe import you know without taking permission from the owner of the invention so that is the that is about the patent claims now let's move forward types of patent claims now there are different types of patent claims but when we talk about patent claims in a patent specification then the patent claims are specifically divided into two types. One is independent claim and second is dependent claim. Okay. So let's understand each one of these types in the next slide. Independent claim. So an independent claim outlines what the inventor seeks to protect in the patent application. So independent claim is the most important type of a patent claim. An independent claim actually mentions that what the inventor is trying to protect through the patent application. Secondly, an independent claim defines an invention's essential elements, features or steps in a comprehensive and self-sufficient manner. So, you know, what that means is an independent claim mentions only those elements or features or steps in case of a method claim without which the invention won't work. So, only those elements, you know, the most necessary elements without which the invention won't work, that is included in the independent claim. Okay, and the third point states an independent claim is a standalone claim. So this is, you know, uh, already understood from the term independent 
So independent claim is such a claim which is self-sufficient in itself. It need not depend on any other type of a claim. Okay. So this is about independent claim. Now let's check the dependent claims. So a dependent claim, as the name suggests, you know, relies on the support of an independent claim. So what that means is the dependent claim is dependent on an independent claim. Or in some cases, a dependent claim is dependent on another dependent claim. So that is also possible. So the second point states, the dependent claim further narrows down the independent claim by adding elements, features or limitations. So as I said, you know, in the earlier slide, that independent claim mentions those elements, features, which are extremely essential. Only that is included in the independent claims. So when a dependent claim is written, it either narrows it down through adding limitations in the you know elements or features of the independent claim, or maybe it adds you know additional elements. So that is the purpose of writing dependent claims in a patent specification. Now the third point states that dependent claims serve to provide fallback positions or alternatives if the broader scope of the independent claim is not deemed patentable. So uh, this can you know be useful in case of prosecution. So when a patent application is examined and uh, based on the search, the examiner states that there are certain patent references or prior art references which are you know uh, talking about the elements or features mentioned in the independent claim of uh, the applicant's invention. In that case, you know, the, the features or the elements mentioned in the dependent claim of the applicant's patent application can be used and incorporated or added in the independent claim to further narrow it down, but then to also make it uh, or differentiate it from the prior art references which the examiner has cited. So that is also one of the use of the dependent claims. Now let's check the example of clips. Okay, so in this example, we have taken the claims of a toothbrush. So this 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 example is taken because you know toothbrush is something we all use daily and we all have uh, proper knowledge about it. So let's check the claims of a toothbrush. So you will understand how you know a claims are written in a patent application. So this, so first is an independent claim. So if you read it, so it's written as an apparatus for cleaning teeth comprising a handle, a head attached to the handle and a plurality of bristles attached to the head, wherein the plurality of bristles are arranged in a pattern for brushing teeth. So if you see, you know, the independent claim only includes those elements or features and steps in case it's a method uh, claim only it includes only those elements which are extremely essential or without which the invention won't work so in this case if you see what the applicant has claimed is a handle obviously you know we know the handle is very important in case of a brush because the brush has to be you know hold and the second thing is head so head is again very important because something should be you know there to support the bristles so a head is there which is attached to the handle and then a plurality of bristles so bristles again form a very essential part of a brush because bristles are you know something which which rubs the teeth and eventually cleans the teeth so this is an example of a independent claim now the second one so this is an independent claim so the moment you read it it's mentioned as the apparatus as claimed in claim one. So you even understand that, you know, the, it is dependent on claim one, which is the independent claim. So the second claim is a dependent claim, which depends on claim one. And it further mentions as wherein the handle includes a non-slip grip surface. So the handle has a grip gripping surface. And, you know, you might also understand that the gripping surface is something which is not an essential component of a brush. So even if we remove that, the brush will still work as it is. So it's an additional element which is you know providing an added advantage. So in that case, it's mentioned in the dependent claim. Now again, let's see another dependent claim. So the third 
claim states the apparatus as claimed in claim 1 so again you know this dependent claim is also de dependent on the first claim which is an independent claim and it further writes wherein the head includes a scraping surface opposite to the plurality of bristles so if you see in the image you know just opposite to the bristles there is a scraping surface which can be rubbed on the tongue of the user to remove you know the impurities from the tongue so again this is also a feature or an element which is not so essential so again this is added in the dependent claim so this is a certain format of writing claims and any patent application a non provisional complete patent application that you read will definitely have a section called claims which is the most important part of a patent specification i hope this is clear so now let's move forward now characteristics of a patent claim now there are certain characteristics associated with patent claims and these are basically defined by the patent office so these are like rules of the patent office which one has to follow while writing so let's check so the first one states a claim is written as a single sentence so this is very important you know so any claim that is written should be a single sentence you cannot add two sentences in a single claim so if you see the example above this is the same example of the brush so if you see you know it starts with a capital letter n a and then it has just one full stop at the end of teeth so it's basically a single sentence so if you take any claim whether it is an independent claim or the dependent claim every claim is a single sentence and you cannot break this rule now the second point states an independent claim is heavily punctuated sentence so this is also very true so if you see the claim example mentioned above so you see you know there is colon at the end of comprising then there is semicolon at the end of handle and then there is comma and then there is full stop so it's a heavily punctuated sentence and this is again you know the format which one has to follow while writing patent claims now the third point states the claim starts with i slash v claim so this is again a mandatory requirement by the indian patent office that whenever you are writing claims in a an indian patent application it has to start with either i claim or v claim depending on the applicant so whether it's an individual then it has to be i claim and if it's like you know uh, joint applicants or if it case it's a uh, company then the claims will start from v claim uh this practice obviously you know it differs in other countries like in us the claim starts with what is claimed is so there is a little difference in the practice country wise but in india the claims has to start from i or v claim then the fourth point states the claims are written at the end of patent specification yeah so whenever you read a patent specification the claims are always written at the end of the patent specification so these are certain characteristics or you can say rules of a patent claim now elements of a patent claim so elements of a patent claim are again similar to you know the rules which have been defined by the patent office so when a patent claim is written it will include three elements the one is first one is preamble then there is transitional phrase and then there is body now what does it mean let's understand that in the next slide so let's start with preamble so what is preamble so the preamble identifies a category of invention okay example apparatus device article composition a method or process so whatever your invention is if the invention is an apparatus or it's a, a device or it's a composition so whatever it is that can be identified from the preamble so we'll take the same example of the brush so if you see in this case it's an apparatus a brush is an apparatus for cleaning teeth so this this part which is you know which is which is in the box red box so that is the preamble of the patent claim so an apparatus for cleaning teeth so this 
this makes it clear what the invention is or what the object of the invention is okay it can be a method also it can be a process also in that case the preamble will be also written as per the method or process then comes the body so what is a body so the body of a claim includes various type of elements depending on the nature of the invention so you know in the in the same example of brush if you see in the red box you know we have mentioned what are the elements there is a handle then there is a head which is attached to the handle and then there is a plurality of bristles attached to the head wherein the plurality of bristles are arranged in a pattern for brushing teeth so these elements are known as the body so you know in case in case in this case there are elements but in case of a process or method claim there will be steps so that steps will come under the body part so you know the second point states these elements may describe the structure composition method steps or functional aspects of the invention so based on what kind of an invention is the body will include that kind of elements or steps or composition then the third part is the transitional phrase so we have seen the preamble we have seen the body so what the transitional phrase is the transitional phrase is the connecting term you know which eventually connects the preamble to the body so in this case the word comprising is the transitional phrase so you see there is preamble and apparatus for cleaning teeth and then there is the body which includes all the elements and the transitional phrase comprising so which connects the preamble to the body now again you know the transitional phrase can be also of different types so there can be consisting or there can be consisting essentially of so these are some types of uh, transitional phrase which we might you know we'll discuss in some other uh, video when we are talking about claims in depth and detail so that is the purpose of transitional phrase so any claim that you see will have these three uh, elements even if it's a dependent claim you will find you know these three elements there is a preamble which is you know depending on maybe another independent claim or a dependent claim then there is a connecting word or the transitional phrase and then there is the body of the claim so that was it in this session uh, i hope you know this had made the concept of patent claim and the elements of construction of a patent claim much clearer to you now so hope to see you in again in another video we'll keep learning about uh, intellectual property rights and patents thank you